Hi Leo, Sun, Moon, and Ascendant. This is Dean, and I'm going to be doing your February 24th, 2024 full moon reading for you. Now I ask if this reading resonates with you, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. It helps me out tremendously, and it gets this channel seen by the YouTube algorithm. So thank you so very much for doing so. So let's see what the tarot has to say. Ooh, I love that. Coming out of a tower time, releasing lies, angels, and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides, angels. Okay, what's very interesting here is that we have the number six reversed and we have the number six in the upright position. Six is a nurturing number. So at times we're very nurturing towards ourselves and at other times the energy that's crowning this reading is that we're not very nurturing of ourselves. Now, that seems to be a theme with this moon that we are very harsh on ourselves. We're very determined, focused, and intense. So being aware of that is going to be very beneficial for us. This is the Virgo full moon right? It's known as the snow moon, which I just think is a beautiful name for the moon. And it is the smallest moon of the year. So what we have is we have the sense of the past coming through very, very strongly. Actually, the past seems a little bit more real at times than the present. So we have to be aware that we could be judging things off of the past instead of right here, right now. So do be mindful about this. With the tower reversed, we're coming out of a tower time. We're coming out of a very intense, very powerful time that just changed the way that we saw things, changed the way we saw or our, our see ourselves, that we saw the world, you know, and it doesn't have to be a bad thing. We always think of a tower time as being something bad, but a tower time can be getting married. It can be having a kid. It can be, you know, all these things that people go, oh, congratulations. This is so wonderful. You know, buying a home or moving to a new state or country or, you know, whatever it is but it puts a whole big amount of stress on you and it's overwhelming and it's intense and it changes the way you see yourself because you know the struggle that you've gone through and it changes the way you see the world. So being aware of this is going to be super important because we always think, oh, it has to look just like this. A tower time is when everything falls apart and you lose it all. It doesn't have to be. You'd be gaining so much that everybody's congratulating you, but it's, it's hard to process. It's hard to download. It's hard to understand. With the seven of swords, reverse, we're releasing a lot of lies, a lot of lies, a lot of doubt, a lot of fears. And it brings us to the Empress. Now, this is the Spirit is saying the, the Eternal Mother card, and this is reversed. So it's interesting. We might not feel like we have that, that safety to turn to at times, or that we have to handle everything like kind of on our own. So do be aware of that. There's also a lot of healing that needs to go on here. So respecting that, healing that energy, embracing our own, you know, inner, our own inner sacred feminine energy is just going to be so prevalent and poignant for ourselves. We're walking away from what we once thought we would love. There's a really hard and really distinct ending here. And it brings us to the six of pentacles. It brings us to putting things into balance and into harmony and a greater understanding. We're also seeing that some things may just always be a little bit out of balance and that's okay. You know, we can't always have it be be just right though during this moon we do want it to be just right where are we going okay here we go <laughs> i was like oh no i got lost all right so let's see what spirit has to say angels and spirit guides show me clearly oh and if you're interested in entering to receive a free reading put a heart in the comment box below a person will be chosen at random and announced on the first of march so good luck to everyone and if you're interested in purchasing a private reading a private personalized meditation or a healing check out my website daneharttarot.com so let's see what spirit has to say angels and spirit guides show me clearly guide this reading and here we have earth this is this is earth energy. This is what the moon is, right? Where we are, sorry, I'm just pushing my mic back, back a bit. This moon is in Virgo. This is earth energy. We are grounding ourselves during this time. We're entering into a closer connection with Mercury as well, because Virgo is ruled by, by Mercury, the sense of saying and embracing our emotions, our feelings, our greater understanding is going to be very important for us as well. But grounding ourselves, stabilizing ourselves, and, and seeing ourselves with, with openness and with a sense of like, this is how I'm planting me. Like, this is how I'm growing my tree of myself, my life tree, 
what I desire, what I need within myself, and how I am opening the doors to where I need to be, body, mind, and spirit. Going outside is going to be super beneficial for us, and also getting enough sun sunlight is also going to be very beneficial. Our chakra energy, angels, and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly, angels. Here we have dream. This is the third eye chakra, and this is coming up quite often for people where our dreams are just going to be intense. Listen to them. And we can have a bit of a hesitance to sleep because we know our dreams are going to be so intense. So just, just be mindful about this, where we can be sitting there and being like, well, I don't want to, I don't want to go to sleep and I don't know why. And it's because we're learning so much through our dreams and we're processing so much through our dreams, which sounds like a really good thing, but we can wake up feeling tired or feeling overwhelmed. And, and, and that could be the reason we have so much information coming to us, which means that we actually need to pamper ourselves a bit more, go to sleep a bit early and, and make sure that we're resting and taking care of ourselves. Let's see what our energy to be mindful of is angels and spirit guides. Show me clearly guide this reading and show me clearly. Ooh, fell right out. The four of pentacles. That's vampiric energy. That is energy that drains, that overwhelms, that is just like, and it's also energy that we've gotten used to. We are, we're used to this vampiric energy. It's kind of like we, we grew up with this. This is the way that we're used to being drained or used to being manipulated, used to being kind of used. And so it feels very familiar and spirit's like, okay, it might feel familiar, but just because it's familiar doesn't mean it's right or doesn't mean it's good for you. So being aware of that is going to be super important. The past is going to come up a lot during this time and just recognizing it, recognizing that there are there are things that need to be seen, yes, from the past, but that the past can take over. It really can during this time. And we won't be in the present. And we won't be responding to the world from the present, but from once upon a time. And though that can be helpful, right? We have past to help us, you know, navigate the present. It, it's not going to be as useful as as maybe we hope it would or as we think it would. So really knowing that we're in the present and that and that we're different people. We're not who we were. Again, once upon a time, it moves us to the tower reversed. We're rebuilding. We're rebuilding after a time that shook us body, mind, and spirit that made us question the way that we're moving forward, the way that we want to do things, you know, where we're headed for ourselves. And that's a big deal. So understanding that and, and seeing that within ourselves is going to be important knowing that, okay, I'm rebuilding after a time that was physically, spiritually, mentally very draining on me is is important to see and that our emotions might be a little bit more on the surface as they usually are with a full moon or with any moon really because the moon guides our emotion but the full moon brings it up have you ever been in the hospital when there's a full moon and you hear the the nurses and the doctors being like oh my gosh it's a full moon <laughs> and i always think that's so i always think that's so funny i always think that's so cool so here not that you know it makes people go to the emergency room but it like people, ha it has a, a visceral response with people. Like, you know, people respond to the full moon and even, you know, doctors can see it. So here, I, I just think that's so cool. Here with the tower, we've gone through a lot and we have to be able to respect that within ourselves. And with the full moon that brings up our emotions, you know, honoring that is going to be really important. There are some lies that we've told ourselves that others have told us and we're starting to let them go. It's like, mm, no, that's, that's not my truth. You know, that's, and even if it was our truth once upon a time, and I know somebody here who's listening is getting annoyed with me saying once upon a time, but that's our past. It's a story that we're writing and that is our past and it has already been written. It can't be undone. So that's why spirit uses once upon a time when referring it to me. And so here with the, the seven of swords, there's a real sense of I'm letting go and I'm seeing myself and I know what I want and I know where I need to be. And I'm not listening to these things that once defined me, but they don't define me anymore. And so we're looking at that with honesty and openness and we're starting to be able to heal but stepping into our sacred feminine energy stepping into our healing energy that's going to be a little bit more difficult for us we can feel that we don't trust it or that we we don't fully understand it or that it's not as proactive it's not as you know superhero -y as we would like it to be because we very much want that energy of moving forward, slaying the dragons, and in seeing the instantaneous results, which are usually more sacred masculine energy. Sacred feminine energy is nurturing the seedlings so that they grow, and then they live forever, right? The trees can live for, for thousands of years. And so what we're going to see here is that, or a thousand years, what we're going to see here is that we find it hard to slow things down and nurture it, to slow things down and 
and be kind. And it, that, that means to ourselves too, to slow down, to be kind to ourselves, to see ourselves, to nurture us, to nurture our dreams and our potential and our desires and our wisdom and to move forward in healing. So during this moon, it's going to be very important to put healing at our center. It brings us to the Eight of Cups. We're walking away from something we once thought we would love. This is a very powerful ending and it can be an ending of the way that we thought of things, an ending of our relationship. It can be, it, it is, I thought it would work. I thought it would be good and it's just not. And we're walking away in a way that is profound and powerful for us. And it brings us then to the Six of Pentacles. It brings us to a place of finding balance. It brings us to a place where we can see that certain things are out of balance. And it's like, okay, I see that. I respect that. And now I'm finding my harmony. I'm moving things forward in the way that they need. It needs to go and the way that I need to for me. So not everything's going to be harmonized instantaneously, which is the way that we would like it. But it it's going to take a moment, but we're going to see that as we slow things down, as we, we care for our, our inner child, our inner self, we can start th to move things forward much more kindly, much more openly, honestly, beautifully for us. And then things start to transform and we level up, we, we move forward, we, we see things with much more honesty and clarity. It moves us then to our lunar energy. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly, angels and spirit guides. Angels. And spirit guides, show me clearly, guide this reading, and show me clearly, angels, and spirit guides. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly, guide this reading, and show me clearly, angels. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly, guide this reading, and show me clearly, angels. And spirit guides, angels. And spirit guides, show me clearly. Interesting. Does that mean it has a triple whammy? So very strong Scorpio energy is coming through, which is very interesting here. We have self-love. Self-love and it's a time to heal. Now, a time to heal is reversed. And that is exactly what spirit was saying when we have difficulty connecting with the healing energy, the heart chakra of us. So being aware of that is going to be a very important thing and a very powerful thing. Self-love moves us forward. This is a time for healing. And it's a time to love ourselves as we move forward from the past, as we respect the once upon a time, as we respect the story of our lives. And we move forward in the present, knowing that we are writing the best book that we can. And it brings us, or, you know, the best movie that we can. Sovereignty. <clears throat> Expect powerful change. That's reversed. We're finding our sovereignty. We're finding ourselves, our individuality, our, our voice and our statement. And here with the tower reversed, as we come out of a lot of change, we don't want more change, but we are going to get more change. So do be, do be aware of this during this time where it's like, expect powerful change, expect yourself to move forward. We're going to be resisting it, but it is going to come forward in ways that we, we hadn't thought of. And it moves us to be bold and make the first move. Now this is reversed because We've been nourished kind of on lies and doubts and fears that we haven't nourished ourselves to be bold and make the first move, to step out of our comfort zone or to step into our power. We, we're doubting that or we're questioning that and we're looking at ourselves in a way that makes us think, mm, I can't do it. And Spirit's like, oh yes, you can. So just be aware of that, that we are going to be, and it makes sense for this moon, we are going to, and everybody is, overthink, overanalyze, you know, and really doubt ourselves and say, mm, you can't do that. What makes you think you can? And what makes us think that we can is that somebody has to, you know, we get to be, we get to be our dreams. Now, maybe we'll not be them the exact way that we had dreamt them. And maybe, you know, we will sit there and say, wow, what I wound up with is so far away from the dream that I had that it's, it's laughable, laughable, but embracing the heart of our dream and the heart of our desire and then seeing it come forward, we might never be on a red carpet. That's fine. You know, we don't have to be. But to see the way that our dreams impact our lives and move us and nurture us and care for us, that is a beautiful thing. Because it leads us here to communication is key. And it brings us power. But we have to embrace our healing and we have to embrace our sacred feminine energy. If we do a quick meditation, take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you. 
and close your eyes and say sacred feminine, sacred feminine, sacred feminine, and see what energy comes forward. Is it loving? Is it caring? Is it nurturing? Is it chaotic? Is it manipulative? Is it aggressive? And then do the same thing for sacred masculine energy. Close your eyes, take a nice deep breath in, exhale, and say sacred masculine, sacred masculine, sacred masculine. How does that come forward in your life? Is it, is it protective? Is it nurturing? Is it caring? Or is it authoritative? Is it angry? Is it belligerent? What, what comes forward? What energy do you connect with? Do you not connect with either one of them because of trauma and hurts and pains? And seeing where we stand and what comes forward, that's the energy that we need to take note of because we're finding our power, but we're finding our power through our pain. And that seems, you know, a little bit convoluted at times, like what a circuitous route, but it's going to be like, we're, we're, we're making that circle around our pain so that we can send love to it and be like, okay, I'm here. I'm showing up for me. It's time to release negativity. It is because if we don't, it's stunting our growth. It's keeping us held back in a way that we don't really want to be, or we don't want at all. So being aware of that is going to be, it's going to be powerful for us. Now here we have release. As we release, a new start is coming. Now we doubt that prosperity lies ahead and we also don't want to work through our fears. So as we are releasing, we need to work through our fears and believe that prosperity lies ahead. Again, it might not be a McMansion. You don't need one. What you need is a quiet, happy, good life, which is exactly like the opposite of what we're being sold, right? <laughs> so here, with a new start is coming, as we move towards the new moon, we're going to be seeing ourselves with an openness and with an honesty. And knowing that prosperity lies ahead, knowing that we need to work through our fears, but knowing that we doubt it. And the doubt is what comes through because it's going to be the more powerful, it's, it's, it's going to be the easier energy vibration to slip into doubt and fear and anger. Do you not see like in this world that it's so easy to slip into that energy? It's like, oh, here I am angry and afraid. And, you know, now joining this team or this group or, or this thing that's also angry and afraid. So as we, as we heal, we start to see ourselves as ourselves again, like claiming back our power, our individuality, our, our grace of being. Our subconscious spirit message is created. No, is centered. But created comes forward too, because we were created in the image of the universe. We have stardust that runs through our veins that sounds like the beginning of a fairy tale, but is, is the truth of it all. We need to center ourselves in the knowledge that we are part of something so much greater than we ever thought. It brings us then to our subconscious chakra message, which is love, the heart chakra, embracing love, moving in love, you know, just absolutely bathing ourselves in love is going to be a very powerful and beautiful thing. With the Queen of Pentacles energy, Earth sign energy, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. Remember, this full moon is in Virgo, so it might not resonate with us the way that we want it to. If we're born on the cusp with Virgo, if we have, you know, Earth sign energy in our chart, we might be having a bit of difficulty with this. But this is also the energy that I always see it and say, and Spirit says, you know, some people just, you don't like, <laughs> you don't like them and you don't know why. And this is like, if the vibrational energy isn't right for you, let's move on. Our subconscious tarot message is the King of Pentacles reversed. And that is exactly it. This is also a sense of being very strict with ourselves. We have to do this. We have to do that. Now, I might be a little bit too willy nilly at times. Oh, just go with the flow, everything like that. So structure is good. I'm not going to say that it's not. But what Spirit is saying here is that we can be too strict with ourselves and too focused on financial goals. Again, I'm never going to say that money isn't important. It most definitely is. But with the King of Pentacles reverse, it can become an obsession, which then when it's an obsession, it's all that we think about. And we're never going to have, we're never going to have enough. We never are. So stepping back and saying, okay, let me plant the seeds. Let me nurture things. Let me see how it grows. Instead of being frustrated and angry, let me work slowly and carefully and gently. Like we would with, ch with a child, like we would when we, we plant a garden. We don't sit there and plant the, the tomato seeds and all of a sudden expect tomatoes. It takes time. And we're going to see that within ourselves. What we're planting, we need to be kind with. We need to nourish. We need to, you know, we, we need to be a part of it. 
You know, we need to water the plants. We need to nourish the children, just as we need to nourish ourselves and water ourselves, meaning that we need to connect with our own emotions, our subconscious. And then we'll see the success come. Will we ever see the success come? Then we have patience is reversed. I mean, okay, fair enough. We're not always known as the most patient people, but we also have the full moon in Leo. Don't let pride get in your way. Don't let pride get in your way, Leo. And be patient, even though we don't want to be. So as we move forward, know that we do connect with this full moon quite powerfully. We are going to be annoyed or frustrated with the Virgo aspect of it, but we're connecting with the power of ourselves. We're seeing ourselves and we have to be patient. We have to kind of like slow things down and connect. All right. All right, Leo. I hope this reading has resonated with you. I wish you, I wish you nothing but light, love, peace, and happiness. May harmony always be with you. I am sending loving, healing energy to each and every one of you. I love you all and stay safe. Let's end this reading with a meditation, a clearing away of negative energy, a raising of our positive energy as we embrace the power, intensity, and beauty of this moon and of ourselves. So take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you. May you move forward in peace and in harmony. Leo, may blessings and prosperity always be with you. God bless and have a blessed moon. Bye.